Settle in, let's get you set for the weekend. And maybe you got some plans to hit the beach tomorrow or Sunday. Red tide hanging around? Well, it might have you reconsider some of our sandy spots that you want to go to. Now look, it's nothing like what we saw a few years ago, but there are some dead fish washing ashore and the local health department is saying if you have asthma or any breathing issues, maybe you want to skip beaches that are seeing some of these blooms. Here's some of the popular spots that we are seeing medium levels of red tide, Pasigro, Reddington Shores, Indian Shores, and now Sand Key Beach. It's all those orange dots that you see right there. So what's causing it? Will it get worse? And can we do anything to stop it? Our Shannon Close spoke with scientists to find out. This study will use water samples of rain and storm drain runoff that goes into Tampa Bay. They're going to mix those water samples with Karenia brevis. That's a harmful algal bloom species, which causes red tide. Living in our community. My commute from St. Petersburg to Moat Marine Lab is great. I get to go over the Skyway and see Tampa Bay. Amanda Muni Morgan sees how red tide is hurting our environment. When I moved to this area and realized how big of an issue red tide is. That's why she's at the University of Florida, studying what nutrients fuel Karenia brevis. That causes harmful algal blooms like red tide. Reclaim water that's beneficial because you're reusing water that would otherwise be wasted does have a lot of nutrients in it. It can potentially impact our neighboring water quality. Fertilizers, pet waste, even lawn clippings can add harmful nutrients into our water. Um, I really want to shed some light on some independent practices that can be compounded. She will collect stormwater runoff and rain in Tampa Bay, mixing it with Karenia brevis. She will use advanced technology like a mass spectrometer to determine what nutrients are fueling Karenia brevis. My best hope at the end of this is that we can have a greater understanding on perhaps our individual impacts on water quality. Her findings may reveal we need to make some changes. If we have such high nutrients in our reclaimed water, maybe the case will be we need to further treat that reclaimed water, maybe expanding our fertilizer ban. The two year study will narrow down what's harmful. From there, she hopes to educate us on how we can help. Everybody can make their contribution and compounded, it'll make a huge impact.